Hi, I'm Randy Nelson. I'm the Off-Road Technical Trainer for Polaris Industries, and today I'm going to show you how to install a Pro HD 4500 pound winch with rapid rope technology on this Razor XP1000. Before we begin, we want to make sure we read the instructions and check to be sure all the parts and tools are accounted for. We want to make sure to retain these instructions for future reference and parts ordering information. Before we begin the installation process of the winch, we want to make sure that the vehicle is shifted in the park and the ignition is turned to the off position with the key removed from the ignition. So we're going to go ahead and remove the seat from the vehicle and then we're going to disconnect the battery before we can safely work on the vehicle. We're going to lift up on the latch of the back of the seat, tip it up a little bit, slide it back and remove the seat from the vehicle. So now we're going to go ahead and disconnect the battery. We always want to ensure we disconnect the ground cable first, then the positive cable. So I'm going to go ahead and just undo the negative cable. Let's wiggle the uh, connection a little bit and make sure she comes loose. And it does. Go ahead and just kind of route that out of the way. I like to just kind of throw a rag over the top of it and wrap it up for it doesn't make contact with the frame. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing for the positive cable. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and remove the hood. To remove the hood, there's two quarter turns, one on either side. So just give it a quarter of a rotation, and we're going to lift up on the hood and slide it forward and remove it from the vehicle. So I wanted to add an added note here. So what you'll notice on our battery cables here is that we have two blacks and we have two red cables. The two, the two extra cables here, the one black and the one red, these are actually part of our power cable kit that's actually running from our battery up to our bus bar. So this vehicle is already equipped with the power cable kit. If your vehicle is not equipped with that, you're going to have to buy that kit separately and you're going to have to run those wires from the battery through the vehicle up to the bus bar and make sure you reference your instructions on how to do that installation process. Since our vehicle has the power cable kit, we're not going to be removing the center console during this installation. So we're in the front of the vehicle here. We need to remove the front winch cover here. It's held in place by two 10 millimeter bolts. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. And these are just screwing into plastic, so they're going to come out fairly easy. And we're going to remove the grill from the front fascia, and we're moving on. So in preparation to remove the front fascia from the vehicle, we want to make sure we disconnect the headlights. So the headlight connector is right here. There's just a tab. We just got to pull up on it a little bit and then slowly pull out the connector. And we'll go ahead and repeat the process on the passenger side of the vehicle. Once that's done, we can go ahead and remove the front fascia and I'll walk you through where all the screws are located. So we're going to go ahead and remove the front grill from this vehicle prior to actually removing the fascia. And the reason why we're doing that is this vehicle is actually equipped with the ride command with the front mounted camera. So we're going to want to make sure we disconnect the camera so we can just tilt the grill forward and we can go ahead and disconnect the electrical connection. And I'm just using the small little pick to release the connector. So now we're going to go ahead and begin and remove the front fascia assembly. So the front fascia assembly is actually held on by 10 Torx screws. There is one underneath here on the left side on the fender. So one, there's one on the outer side, there's two. Two across the top, which is three and four. And then we have the same thing on the other side, here and here. We got one located here, 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 and here for a total of 10 Torx screws total on the vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and begin by removing these torque screws. There it is. So we're going to go ahead and remove the front fascia. Again, if your front fascia has any more wires connected to it, you're going to want to make sure you disconnect them now. We should be clear to remove it from the vehicle. And we have one connector left, it looks like. We have one for the GPS puck, so we'll go ahead and disconnect that. And we have one zip tie under here that we'll have to get off also. So we went ahead and installed the winch mounting bracket in the vehicle. We brought it in from the driver's side of the vehicle between the radiator and the shock. And we tipped it in and brought it into place. And the reason we did it off camera is just because it was hard to get our camera angle in here to show you. So the bracket's actually held in place by four bolts. There's a bolt here, a bolt on the opposite side, there's one on the lower side and one down here. Now those bolts are actually just a carriage bolt 
with a nylon lock nut. So the ones in the back, the bolt's gonna come from the back side through the frame and then the nut's gonna be on the inside. And on the front ones, they come from the front of the vehicle and the nut's on the inside of the vehicle nearest the gear front gear case. So just a couple of added notes here, you'll notice that there's actually a vent line right here. This is the atmospheric vent going to the front gear case. There's a notch cut out in that mounting bracket. You need to make sure that's in place right there and then making sure that our coolant line hoses aren't being pinched or anything by the bracket. And you'll see that the lip of the bracket in the back actually rests on the frame of the vehicle. And then there's another tab on the front, which will get you another shot of that to show you what we're talking about. But there's a tab on the front that rests on the frame of the vehicle also. And we went back and we just made sure we torqued everything to specifications. So we're gonna go ahead and install the winch into the vehicle. We're gonna come in from the driver's side of the vehicle. So what I did here is I pulled out some of the rope. When I get the winch kind of up into position, not fully, I'm gonna run the winch rope through the frame of the vehicle. That way we don't have to fight with it while it's in the vehicle. You'll also note that I didn't connect the yellow and the blue cable to the winch motor yet. It just makes it a little bit easier to install the winch without having the cables attached to it. So we'll go ahead and install it. You need to be careful when you're coming around the side here for the suspension components and the radiator. You're also going to have to kind of contend with the upper radiator hose. So you just have to kind of move that out of your way while you slide the winch into place on top of the bracket. So we'll come through like that. Just have it pushed back in the chassis. And we'll run our rope through. And then we'll mount our winch on the plate. And then we'll go ahead and use the provided fasteners or a 13 millimeter head. And we'll come in from the bottom and torque those to specification. So just an added note here on the mounting plate that the winch has, there's two holes, uh, an inner and an outer hole. We're actually gonna be using the outer holes to put our fasteners in. And we'll go to the other side and install our fasteners there too. So we got these started, so we'll go to the other side. You always wanna double check to ensure that you don't have the brake line or the wiring going down to the front gear case pinched on the winch mounting bracket. Um, ours are okay on this side, so we're good to continue on. So we're gonna go ahead and loosely install the blue and the yellow cable onto the winch motor. We're not gonna tighten up the fasteners at this time. We just wanna loosely install them and just kind of slightly route them into the chassis. We'll come back and we'll tighten up all the fasteners at once, once we get the winch contactor mounted. That way we have a really good orientation on the cables. So we'll go ahead and just remove the nut and the washer off the stud. And then we'll go ahead and install one of the cable leads. We'll go ahead and install the yellow one. And the way I'm installing it is this way, with the dip kind of dropping down. Slide it down there like that. We'll put the washer back on. And then we'll just go ahead and get that nut on there just to start. I will just loosely connect it and we'll do the same thing with the blue cable. And you might have to kind of flex that lower radiator hose out of your way, but there is room to do it. And again, we'll go ahead and install that cable with the uh, drop kind of facing down on top of the stud. So we're going to go ahead and install the auto stop fair lead onto the bracket. So this bracket's going to mount onto the front of the vehicle, onto the frame. So we're going to go ahead and put the fair lead up in the position here and it's held in place by these eight millimeter allen bolts so the bolt's going to go through the front of the fair lead through the hole and we're going to have a locking nut on the back side and that's going to be nylock and we'll do the same thing with the other side here and we'll tighten this down so the front again is going to be an eight millimeter allen and the back is going to be a 15 millimeter nut so we're just using a 15 millimeter 3 8 drive socket. And just as an added note, the wiring for the fair lead is gonna be coming out towards the passenger side of the vehicle when this mounting bracket is placed onto the vehicle. So we're gonna go ahead and mount the mounting bracket onto the front frame of the vehicle here. So we're gonna go ahead and pass the synthetic rope through the fair, fair lead. And then we're gonna hang this up onto the vehicle. There's two mounting holes on the top and there's two mounting holes in the bottom. So we're gonna be using these larger bolts here. We're gonna pass those through and we'll get the other one in there. We'll hold those in place and we'll go ahead and install the nuts on the back side. And then we'll go ahead and install the lower fasteners. So we'll go ahead and tighten these up. We're using a 15 millimeter 3 8 drive 
socket and we're using an 18 millimeter wrench. So when you're tightening up these bottom ones, when I'm tightening up the passenger side, I'm coming from the driver's side to get onto the bolt head. And the reason why I'm doing that is because there's a frame member right here that I can't get a wrench on that at that angle. So uh, you could do it if you had another, another 3 8 ratchet. In our case, we're just going to go ahead and use the uh, opened end wrench. Go ahead and tighten those down and we'll torque these all snug and then we'll come back and torque them the specifications. And then we'll do the top ones also. Just an added note, just be careful with your other end of your wrench here for you don't damage the radiator. So, so we're going to go ahead and install the winch contactor. The winch contactor mounts on the bulkhead just, in, just behind the radiator and there's four holes pre-drilled already in the bulkhead for you. And we're going to use these black screws and they go in through the contactor and we'll get them started just with our fingers. And we don't need to over tighten these because they are going into plastic. So we'll get a couple of those started. And just as an added note, you'll notice that the wiring for the winch contactor is going to be hanging off to the passenger side of the vehicle. So we'll come in here and tighten these down. And what I'm using is this an eight millimeter quarter inch drive ratchet. So when you're installing these screws to get them started, you're going to have to put a little pressure inwards because they are cutting the threads into the bulkhead. And just as an added note, you want to make sure you just tighten these up snug. You don't want to over tighten them. Otherwise, you'll strip off the plastic in the bulkhead. So our next step here is we're going to actually route our blue and yellow motor cables from the winch to our contactor. So again, these two fastening points are loose right now. And the reason why they're loose is because I want to get everything into position before I tighten down the bolts on the motor and on the contactor. That way the routing looks nice. So we're going to route it through the vehicle here and I'm passing on the inside of this wiring harness bundle right here. And the frame is right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and make my connection points to the winch contactor and the winch contactor posts are color coded with the paint, paint colors of the wires that should go on the post. So the yellow one's right down at the bottom down here on mine. I'm going to go ahead and contact that. Connect it up. I'm just going to put the nut on loosely right now just to get everything kind of in the position. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect the blue cable. So what we're going to do here now is the red and black cables provided in the winch kit, they're going to run from our bus bar connection down to our winch contactor. You'll notice that our bus bar here, we got a heavy gauge red wire and a heavy gauge black wire. These are part of the power wire kit that is not included with this winch kit. These wires run from the bus bar to our main battery on the vehicle. Some vehicles, depending on what gear you're working on, are equipped with this stock from the factory. That's why ours are on here and we didn't show that installation process. So these wires we're going to go ahead and run. Before I install those, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the upper dash here from my cameraman can get a better shot of the bus bar. Additionally, we actually need to mount a wireless receiver actually on the bulkhead here and we're going to want to see what's on the back side of the bulkhead before we drill our pilot holes in there to mount that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the two screws that holds the upper dash on. Those are a T40 torque screws. So we'll go ahead and get those out of our way. We're going to make sure we retain these because we will be reusing them. So once those screws are out, we can just lift the dash up a little bit and we're going to push the dash rearward because we got to unlock some clips from the dash. Once that's released, we can just move the dash back a little bit and just make sure that it's not going to scratch anything. At this point in time, that gives us access for my cameraman can get a view of the bus bar and then we can feel the back side of the ball kit here when we drill our pilot holes to mount our wireless receiver. So right now we're going to go ahead, I just pulled this rubber boot off. We're going to go ahead and remove the nuts from the black and the red terminal. This is a 10 millimeter quarter inch drive socket. So we're going to go ahead and remove these. Uh, we're going to keep, keep the nuts because we are going to be reusing them. Once they're loose, they kind of thread off fairly easy. There's a fine thread. So once those are removed, we're going to run our battery cables from our bus bar down to our winch contactor. 
You'll notice that one end has the rubber boots on there and one end does not have the rubber boots. The rubber boots will actually go down to the winch contactor. We're just gonna go ahead and route the wires down the bulkhead, just kind of feeding them through. And then we're gonna make our connection point on our bus bar for the ground. And we're gonna make our connection for the positive or the red cable. So we're gonna go ahead and loosely just put the nuts on the terminals. And the reason why I'm doing this is just to prevent the wires from falling down into the vehicle. Plus we still have more wiring, wiring we have to do up here. So once we come back up here, we can button everything up at once. So once those are loosely installed, I'll go down to the winch contactor and I'll connect the black and red cables to the corresponding colored posts on the winch contactor. I'm gonna go ahead and orientate all the wires on the winch contactor. And then I'm gonna go ahead and torque the nuts down on the winch contactor and then move on. And you just wanna kinda of keep an eye on verifying the wiring is in, in the position where you want it and none of the wires are making contact with each other and they're just kind of a clear location. I can see that mine, my black cable and my blue cable are kind of getting kind of close together. So I'm just going to reposition all those so they don't make contact. And we're just using a 10 millimeter socket, quarter inch drive. Again, we're just snugging these down. We don't want to over torque them. And then we'll go down to the motor and tighten up our blue and red cables. We'll get those routed into a position that looks good. And then we'll come back and we'll zip tie all the wiring, making sure none of the wiring is making contact with our brake line. So I'll give these wires a little wiggle back and forth, make sure they're secure. These are all secure. So we'll go ahead and make sure the boot is on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zip tie these lines off the brake line. We don't want it making contact with our brake line. So we'll just use the supplied zip ties in the kit to tie those together, get them down kind of low on the, on the wires. Get one there, comes off the brake line. That way we don't rub against it. And then what we'll do is we'll probably make another connection right around the main frame here. So we'll get another zip tie in here. So we have a couple, couple electrical control boxes that we need to mount. One of those boxes is actually going to be this control box that's white. We're going to mount this in the center of the vehicle, either a little bit left of center, a little bit right of center. But we're going to mount it on this cross member here with the zip ties provided in the kit. So we're going to go ahead and mount that control box here. So we're just going to run a zip tie through the frame and then back around itself. And we're going to zip tie that in the position. We'll put two zip ties on here to make sure it's secure to the frame. And there's really no right or wrong way how to mount this as long as it's somewhat in the center of the vehicle. The only tip I would have for you here is one side of this control box has a black and orange wire on it and it has the, the white connector here with the double black wires coming out. That's going to be on the passenger side of the vehicle because that wire is eventually going to hook up down to the fair lead connector on the front of the vehicle. And we'll show you how I routed the wires for that fair lead here shortly. And we'll show you how to make all those electrical connections easy. So the last part of this is the wireless receiver. The wireless receiver is actually going to mount right here on the bulkhead. And what you'll notice here is that we have two connectors located here. One of these is the diagnostic connector for the vehicle. And the other one is actually a Y harness for the ride command unit that's installed in this vehicle. So we actually need to relocate these. So the best thing to do is come behind the clip with either a screwdriver or a needle nose and just slowly kind of pry out on them and work them out slowly. They're just plastic and they'll pull right out. I'll do the same thing for the other one. And we're gonna pull those aside for right now and we'll find a new mounting location for those later. So when the wireless receiver gets mounted on here, we're gonna mount it just like that. And we want to ensure on the back side of the bulkhead, we're not gonna be drilling into the glove box compartment on the passenger side of the vehicle. So I can feel the back side. I see there's plenty of clearance in here. So we're gonna go ahead and drill a couple holes. So I already got them marked already with a gray Sharpie. I'll go ahead and mark the other two holes for the bottom of the control box here, or for the wireless receiver, excuse me. And we'll go ahead and put that in position right there.
We're going to go ahead and install the control box here. So included in the kit, there are these torque screws. They're black. They got a little tiny point on them. They're just going to go into plastic for you. So just make sure when you're installing them, you don't go over tighten them. These are going to be a T25 Torx. So I'll just get one started here. Okay, so we just finished up mounting the wireless receiver here to the bulkhead. So just an added note, I remember telling you that I removed these two connectors from the bulkhead before I could mount the receiver here. So those I just remounted back here. So what I did is I removed the wiring from the bus bar. Then I drilled my holes, making sure there was nothing behind there, and then just remounted them. The connector right here is actually for our diagnostic connector. So I kind of kept that accessible for a technician could get to it easily. So that's all done. None of my nuts up here are tight at this time. So I'm going to walk you through the wiring here. There looks like a lot going on, but it's actually fairly simple. So we're actually going to start actually right at the wireless receiver itself. So the wireless receiver has a couple wires or four total wires running out of it. Starting off, there's an orange wire and a black wire with a ring terminal on it. Now the orange wire actually is a spade connector and in the kit there's a little jumper extension harness with a ring terminal. This orange wire is going to go to the orange and white wire connection on the bus bar. This is key switch power. So when the ignition switch is on, this terminal becomes powered. The black wire here is going to go to the center stud on our black cables. Okay. So the other wire that's going to the wireless receiver is this green and black wire going into a Y connection. Now this Y connection is just a splitter that comes in the kit. So it's this, this, and that. So it'll have three ends on it. And what you're going to do is you're going to connect the green and the black to the green and the black on the Y harness. The other side of the Y harness here that has the other green and black, this is not going to be used. This actually gets used if you had the switch in the dash for the winch control. This vehicle is going to get equipped with a remote control winch, so it's going to be wireless. Coming down this Y harness connector to the other Y connection, it plugs into another set of green and black wires. So we're just mashing the colors up. This wire here runs to the control box that we mounted previously onto the frame. On that wire, or on this control box here, there's also another black and green wire leaving it. That black and green wire is going down to another white connector that's plugging into our winch contactor. Okay? So additionally, on that control box, we have another orange wire with a spade connection that I installed a jumper wire in there with a ring terminal that's going to go to the orange white wire on the bus bar and the black wire with the ring terminal that's going to go to the black wire terminal on the bus bar. So the last wire coming off the control box is a double, bl double black wire. This connector simply runs down to the fair lead and we're going to route that behind the cooling fan. So we're going to go ahead and make that connection and we'll show you how we have the wire routed from the fair lead through the vehicle and then we're going to come back and just button everything up here. So here's our fair lead wiring coming off the front of the vehicle. So what I did is I just lifted up on the radiator and lifted it up out of the rubber bumper boots. And what I did is I ran the connector just on the right side or the center portion of the radiator. So it's plenty of room under here. The radiator's back in place and this wire's not going to rub. We'll go ahead and zip tie this wiring up to this frame here and get that cleaned up but it just makes a nice clean pass through rather than wrapping it around the corner on the edge here. Um, that looks nice, so we're going to go ahead and zip tie everything up and move on. So everything is all hooked up on the bus bar right now. So we're going to come back and we're going to use our 10 millimeter uh, quarter inch drive. I'm just going to go ahead and snug everything down. Start with the uh, orange with the black tra or excuse me, orange with white tracer. So the key switch power. Just snug that down. We don't want to over tighten them. Just snug them down. So you'll notice on the black wires or the black cables here, those two smaller gauge black wires with the ring terminals. I put those underneath the black wire to sandwich everything together. That way we get, we get a nice tight fit. 
when we tighten down the nut. So what we'll do is we'll come back here and what I did with this rubber boot, you guys might have saw this earlier that I took it off the cable here. What I did is I just cut the back side of the boot open like this and I'm going to wrap it on to the cable and I'm going to run a zip tie around it and just secure it to the red cable. You're not going to be able to pass both those heavy gauge wires through this boot. So this is the next best thing is to just get this into position like that, spread out the rubber protector a little bit and then run a zip tie around it to hold it in place. So we'll go ahead and do that next. So the last wire we routed was the wire that's going to the fair lead. So you'll see it here, we're actually following the same routing as actually the atmospheric vent going to the front gear case. And there's actually a clip already on the vehicle, on the fan itself. I opened that clip up and then I just tucked that wire in there with that hose. And then I added some additional zip ties along the way. Just make sure you don't over tighten those zip ties. You don't want to collapse that vent hose on there. So we went ahead and added additional three zip ties and buttoned everything up. So we're going to go ahead and reinstall the upper dash. So just kind of be careful when you're getting this in the position. You got these tabs on the inside. Kind of make sure they lock into the dash. And then we'll reinstall our two T40 torque screws. So we'll kind of get that in the position there. And then we'll have to come into the, uh, the cockpit of the vehicle and just give it a little bump with our palm of our hand. Make sure all the clips are locked in. Looks good. So we'll go ahead and install our T40 screws. So we're going to go ahead and reinstall the front fascia onto the vehicle. So just as an added note, the wiring right here is for actually our vehicle that's equipped with ride command. This connection here with the orange is actually for our GPS puck. And then the white connector here is for our front mounted camera. So we're just going to lay this in front of the radiator for right now for when we go to reinstall everything and hook everything back up, it's easy and accessible. So we're going to want to lift this up. We're going to pass the rope through there. And the reason why I don't have the hook on there right now is because it would have just been banging against the front fascia and it just wouldn't be good. So we're going to go ahead and get this up in the position. Takes a little finesse, just making sure our connections are good. It looks like the plastic's going to fit right in place. Just make sure there's nothing pinching. And we got to get kind of below that and we are. So now we'll go ahead and install our uh, T40 torque screws onto the front fascia, the ones we took out earlier, and we'll go ahead and torque those down the specifications. So we're going to go ahead and reconnect our headlights back under the fender here. So we'll grab that connector and just make our connection. Make sure you hear that audible click and we'll do the same thing on the passenger side. And we want to make sure we hear that audible click. And we're good there, so we're going to go ahead and reinstall the grill and hook up the wiring to the grill for the front mounted camera and the GPS puck. So we went ahead and just pulled out some rope out of the winch here. So we need to run the magnetic stopper onto the synthetic rope. So it actually has to pass through this way. On this rubber stopper, there's the word Polaris. That's going to face the front of the vehicle. So when this rubber stopper gets retracted in with the rope, once it meets the fair lead, it tells the winch that actually to stop working. So we need to pass this rope through. So it's going to be a little challenging to get it through here. So a little tip here, what you can do is you can actually just run a zip tie through the rope itself. And we're going to pass this through the rubber bumper, making sure the Polaris logo is facing outwards. You might need to get a little bit of a pliers on here and just kind of give it a pull through or push it through. Once it's through there, what we can do is grab the other end here and line up the rope with the slit in the rubber bumper. Just like that. And we can hold on to the rubber bumper and pull the zip tie and that'll actually pull the synthetic rope through the rubber bumper. And then we can go ahead and cut the zip tie off and then we can go ahead and install our pin and then our cotter pin and attach everything here. So we're going to go ahead and reinstall the hood back on the vehicle here. Just to add a note here, you got these locking ears that have to slide into these square holes here. We're going to go ahead and install that on there. Get into place, turn our quarter turns, give the hood a little bit of pull, make sure it's secured to the vehicle. And we're going to move on to the hooking up the battery back up. 
Go ahead and hook up the battery here. So just an added note, you want to make sure you hook up the positive cable first and the negative cable last when you're hooking up a battery. So we'll go ahead and get this positive post tightened down. And just make sure we don't slip with the wrench and hit the negative post. That's good. We'll go ahead and get the rubber protective boot slid back over the battery terminal. That's in position and we're going to go ahead and hook up the black ground cable. And what we'll do is we'll pass it back underneath actually that lifting strap to make it a little nicer looking. And we'll go ahead and tighten that one down. And we'll go ahead and reinstall the seat. I want to make sure the ears on the bottom of the seat are underneath that loop on the front of the vehicle. And then we hear it latch in, give it a little pull back, make sure it's secure, and we're done with the seat. So the next step is going to be mounting the wireless remote control. So if the wireless remote control sits in a holster, so we can remove the remote from the holster. And the recommended location for this is actually on the dash right here. And included in the kit are some torque screws that you, all you have to do is drill an eighth inch pilot hole here and then run these torque screws into the dash. Just make sure you control the depth of your drill bit going into the dash and you ensure there's nothing behind there prior to drilling. Again, this is the recommended location. It's not the, the location you have to put it though. So to turn on the wireless remote, we need to hold down the power button at the bottom of the, uh, the remote. Hold that down and then the red light will illuminate and now the remote is powered up and then we can go ahead and operate the remote with the in and out function. To turn it off, it'll have an auto off. But if you want to turn it off manually, you just hold down the power button and then the red light will go off and it shut off. So we're going to have to confirm the winch operation with the wireless remote. We're going to hold down the out button and now we're going to hold down the in button and allow it to come all the way in the rope until it hits the rubber bumper, making sure the auto stop fair lead is working properly. And it's done. Your rapid recovery winch is equipped with three different gear settings, high, neutral, and low. When in neutral, the end marking will show through the cutout window on the shift knob. The high gear setting is meant for rapid recovery mode only and should not be used while the rope is under load. To shift in the high gear, rotate the gear shift knob clockwise until the H marking shows through the cutout window on the shift knob. To shift in the low, rotate the gear shift knob counterclockwise until the L marking shows through the cutout window on the shift knob. For additional information on the rapid recovery winch function, please see your instruction manual included with this kit. So that concludes the installation of the Pro HD 4500 pound winch with rapid rope technology on this Razor XP1000. For additional information on winches and Polaris accessories, please visit polaris.com forward slash winches or visit your local Polaris dealership. <laughs>